Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I'm going to walk you through the process of valuing Altria stock so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Altria is one of the world's largest producers and marketers of tobacco, cigarettes, and similar products. The company is headquartered in Richmond, Virginia and was founded in 1985. Let me give you a full background of the company before we get into the model. Altria is the parent of Philip Morris USA, John Middleton Inc., U.S. Smokeless Tobacco Company, and Philip Morris Capital Corp. Altria also maintains large minority stakes in Belgium-based brewer AB InBev, the Canadian cannabis company Kronos Group, and the e-cigarette maker Juul. Mo is a component of the S&P 500 and was a component of the Dow Jones Industrial Index from 85 to 2008. Altria emerged from Philip Morris. It was from a rebranding of Philip Morris companies. Altria was created because Philip Morris wished to emphasize that its business portfolio had come to consist of more than Philip Morris USA and Philip Morris International. At the time, it owned an 84% stake in Kraft, although that business has been spun off. On March 30th, 2007, Altria's 88.1% stake in Kraft Foods was spun off through a distribution of the remaining stake to Altria shareholders. Also in 2007, the company began the acquisition of cigar manufacturer John Middleton Corp from Bradford Holdings, which was complete in 2008. After Philip Morris International spun off, the former international subsidiaries halted the purchase of tobacco from America, which was a major factor in the closing of a newly renovated plant in North Carolina, a 50% reduction in manufacturing, large-scale layoffs, and induced early retirements. In 2008, Altria officially moved its headquarters from New York City to Richmond, Virginia after Philip Morris sold its downtown offices in New York City a decade earlier. With a few exceptions, all manufacturing, commercial, and executive employees had long been based in and around Richmond. Currently, the company is headquartered in an incorporated area within Henrico County, less than five miles west of the city limits of Richmond, and less than 10 miles from its downtown Richmond campus. In 2009, Altria finalized its purchase of UST Inc., whose products included smokeless tobacco, that's made by U.S. Smokeless Tobacco Company, and wine, made by Chateau St. Michel. This ended a short era of competition between the new Marlboro smokeless tobacco products such as Snus and those produced by UST Inc. On December 8th, 2018, Altria announced its intent to acquire a 45% stake in Kronos Group for $1.8 billion. On December 20th, 2018, Altria finalized the acquisition of a 35% stake in Juul Labs, an e-cigarette company based out of San Francisco. And the cost of that 35% stake was $12.8 billion. On November 3rd, 2019, it was reported that Altria was taking a $4.5 billion write down on its stake in Juul, which was 35% of its original value. On July 28th, 2022, it was reported that Altria's investment in Juul is now worth only 5% of the original amount of $12.8 billion. Despite the losses, Altria has announced that it will continue to support Juul and avoid investing in competing products. That Juul acquisition was a big whiff. Altria is taking a stake in the global business of Swiss tobacco company Burger Sohn, and the price of that is $372 million. Altria and Japan Tobacco announced a joint venture called Horizon Innovations LLC on October 27th, 2022. Horizon, owned 75% by Altria and 25% by Japan Tobacco, intends to sell plume heated tobacco sticks in the U.S. FDA approval was expected to take until 2025, with customers able to buy plume by 2027. Altria completed its acquisition of Enjoy Holdings on June 1st, 2023. 
Enjoy manufactures and distributes electronic cigarettes and vaping products. Altria has significant political influence. Between 1998 and 2004, it spent $101 million on lobbying the U.S. government. That's the second highest figure for any company in the United States. In 2006, the company was found guilty of civil fraud and racketeering. The lawsuit claimed that Altria's marketing of light and low tar cigarettes constituted fraudulent misrepresentations under the Maine Unfair Trade Practices Act because it deceived smokers into thinking the products are safer than regular cigarettes. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 81 billion market cap. They're trading at $46 a share and they have 1.8 billion shares outstanding. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. It doesn't really get more consistent than this. They're right around $8 billion of free cash flow each year. That's a lot of money left over for you, the investor. That's why they pay such a nice dividend and they also buy back stock. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And that could be a little volatile with write downs, especially jewel write downs, goodwill impairments. That's why it's lower in 2021, even though they had healthy free cash flow. Revenue is a sales for the company. That was highest in 2021 at 21 billion. Pretty consistent year to year, although it's not really growing. Let's go through their most recent 10Q. This is as of 3-31-2023, so the first quarter of 2023. On the first page of their 10Q, they list their debt and equity issuances. Common stock of 33 cents. That's the par value. That's not how much a stock is trading in the open market. The reason companies assign a par value to each share of stock is just so they can keep track of the number of shares in the market. And we know that's ticker MO. So if you search MO on Yahoo Finance, this company stock comes up. They issue debt that matures in 2025 with an interest rate of 1.7%. Debt that matures in 2027, interest rate of 2.2%. And another note that matures in 2031. The interest rate on that debt is three and one eighths. Next page is a table of contents. So if you wanna go straight to the balance sheet, you could just click this link or you can scroll to page three. Then you have the income statement, statement of comprehensive income, statement of stockholders equity, and statement of cash flows. Then the MDA, management's discussion and analysis, and some other crap most people don't read. The first financial statement they list is the balance sheet. The balance sheet provides a snapshot of the company's finances, what the company owns, the assets, and what they owe, the liabilities. Assets minus liabilities equals equity. And they show us as of 331, 2023, and as of 1231, 2022. They have cash of 3.9 billion. The assets are listed most liquid to least liquid. Next are accounts receivables, 1.7 billion. That's how much money other companies owe them for selling on credit. And this appears to be 1.7 billion for IQOS. We can search the document for IQOS to figure out what this is. Here it is, IQOS litigation. IQOS is I quit ordinary smoking. In April 2020, RAI Strategic Holdings and RJ Reynolds Vapor filed a lawsuit against Altria asserting claims of patent infringement based on the sale of IQOS system electronic device and Marlboro heat sticks. In November 2020, Healthier Choice Management filed an additional unrelated patent infringement case in the U.S. court against this company. Let's go back to their balance sheet. In inventory, they have 664 million of leaf tobacco, 200 million of other raw materials, work in process 30 million, and finished product 356 million. Because manufacturing companies have to break up inventory into raw materials, work in process, and finished product. They have to group their inventory based on where it is in those three areas. Finished product are the actual cigarettes that are ready to be sold. If it's in work and process, that means it's almost there. It's almost a finished product. And if it's a raw material, 
that means it's still in a box that needs to be assembled into a cigarette. Other current assets, 183 million. Other current assets are still assets that can be liquidated into cash within 12 months. But these assets are not big enough to have their own category, so they're grouped together in other. So total current assets is 7.2 billion. Ideally, you want current assets to be higher than current liabilities. Let's see where their current liabilities are. It's 9.1 billion. So that means they owe 9.1 billion over the next 12 months but they only have 7.2 billion of current assets. So that means they will need more cash. If they had negative operating cash flow, that would be a major concern. That means they would have to take on debt to fund their day-to-day -day operations. But since they have so much positive free cash flow coming in each day, I think it's fine. Property, plant, and equipment, 4.4 billion. That's the cost of all their factories and machinery. Less accumulated depreciation, so the book value is 1.6 billion. Goodwill is the premium they paid above the acquisition price. So that means they paid more for a company than it was worth. I know they reduced Goodwill a lot from Juul. Other intangibles, 12 billion. Investments in equity securities, 9.6 billion. Let's search this dollar amount to get a little more detail on what the equity securities are. It's Abbey, 9.2 billion. Juul is totally written down and Kronos, $348 million. Kronos is a Canadian cannabis company. Here's some info on Abbey. At March 2023, we own 10% of Abbey, consisting of 185 million of restricted shares and 12 million ordinary shares. The restricted shares are not listed, but they are convertible into ordinary shares on a one-to-one -one basis. The fair value of our equity in Abbey was 13 billion in March 31st. 12 billion on 1231, which exceeds the carrying value of 9.2 billion and 9 billion. Abbey is short for Anheuser-Busch InBev. I'm sure you all know this company. It's really big, 110 billion market cap. Let's go back to the balance sheet. So they have 37 billion of total assets. Their current liabilities are 9.1 billion, 1.3 billion of long-term debt that's due within 12 months. They have a good amount in accrued liabilities, 3.8 billion in settlement charges. These are legal charges. An accrued liability is when a company has incurred an expense but hasn't paid it yet. So they do owe this money. It's just not due until sometime in the future. Since it's in the current section, it's due within 12 months. If it's in the non-current liabilities, it's due beyond 12 months. Long-term debt of 24 billion. Their total liabilities are 41 billion. Their liabilities are higher than their assets because their assets are 36.8 billion. So that means they have negative equity. You might think that's a terrible thing, but in their case, it's not that bad because the reason they have negative equity is because they bought back $38 billion of common stock. If they didn't buy all that back, they would have positive equity because when a company buys back its own common stock, that decreases their cash. And of course, it also decreases their equity. Because they do have positive retained earnings. They generated $30 billion after paying dividends. And they raised $5.9 billion from issuing stock. So if they do need cash, they can just reissue the stock they bought back. When a company buys back its common stock, those shares are taken off the market and carried on the balance sheet as treasury stock. If a company reissues the treasury stock at a profit, that means if they bought it for $100, and then resold it, say the following year for $120, the difference is credited to additional paid in capital. If a company reissues the treasury stock at a loss, the difference is debited to additional paid in capital. Let's look at their income statement. Revenue for the first quarter, 5.7 billion, down from 5.9 billion. Cost of revenue, 1.4 billion. That includes the cost to buy the tobacco and payroll and a lot of other costs. Excise taxes, 956 million, so their gross profit is 3.3 billion, almost exactly last year's. They spent a lot of marketing, 570 million, up from 490 million. If you want to know why marketing increased, you can just search the word marketing, and it talks about it right here. Marketing, admin, and research costs increased 83 million, or 17%, due to higher general corporate expenses including an agreement to resolve lawsuits in 2023. And then if you want to know what the lawsuits are, you can look at note 11. 
Operating income of $2.8 billion down from $2.9 billion. They paid $229 million of interest on their debt. That's down from $280 million. They received $80 million of income from their investments. This is from Kronos, Jewel, and Anheuser-Busch. So if Anheuser-Busch had a really good year, reported positive net income, that would help this company's income statement. And the opposite is true. Here's a breakdown of the 80 million. Negative 205 million from Abby, positive 35 million from Kronos, and a positive 250 million from Jewel. Their EBIT, 2.5 billion, taxes 700 million, earnings of 1.8 billion, down from 2 billion, EPS $1 down from 108. And my favorite report, statement of cash flows. Even though they reported an accounting profit of 1.8 billion, they actually generated 3 billion of operating cash flow. Last year, they generated 3.1 billion. They had a cash outflow of 56 million in their investing section. Most of that was CapEx, investments in property, plant, and equipment. In their financing section on the statement of cash flows, they had a cash outflow of 3 billion. They paid back 1.3 billion in debt. They didn't repurchase any stock in the first quarter. They paid 1.7 billion of dividends. Last year, they repurchased 600 million of common stock and 1.6 billion in dividends. The next section are the notes to the financial statements. Here's a background of the company. It talks about some of their acquisitions. We also own 75% in Horizon Innovations, a joint venture with Japan Tobacco. I mentioned some of this stuff in the beginning of the video. But on March 3rd, we entered into a definitive agreement to acquire Enjoy Holdings for approximately $2.75 billion in cash, plus an additional $500 million in cash payments that are contingent upon regulatory outcomes with respect to certain Enjoy products. Share repurchases. In January 2021, we authorized a $2 billion share repurchase program that expanded to $3.5 billion in October 2021. In January 2023, we authorized a new $1 billion share repurchase program. The timing of share repurchases under this program depends upon marketplace conditions and other factors, and the program remains subject to the discretion of the board. So they didn't buy any stock in the first quarter. They could buy up to $1 billion in the next three quarters, or they might not buy back anything. It's up to them. It talks about that right here. For the first quarter, there were no repurchases. The total share repurchases historically is 11.3 million. The cost is 576 million, so they paid $50.69 per share. Since the stock is trading below $50.69, they have an unrealized loss. Let's look at this stock on Simply Wall Street. Altria Group, through its subsidiaries, manufactures and sells smokable and oral tobacco products in the US. Here are some of their competitors BAT, 57 billion pound market cap. Imperial Brands, 15 billion pounds. Japan Tobacco, 5.6 trillion yen. And Philip Morris, 143 billion market cap. Here's their stock chart the last year. We'll go through their stock price in more detail later. Recent news and updates. Altria might be a value trap. Altria completed the acquisition of Enjoy Holdings from Mudrick Capital. The stock is up 2% in the past seven days. U.S. tobacco companies are down 2% and the U.S. market is up 1.8%. In the past year, the stock is down 3.5%. U.S. tobacco companies down 20%. The total market is up 14%. They were founded in 1822, 6,300 employees. The CEO is Billy Gifford. Market cap of 81 billion, earnings of 5.5 billion, revenue of 20 billion. P.E. ratio 14.6, price to sales of 3.9, revenue of 20 billion, cost of revenue 6 billion, gross profit 14 billion, other expenses 8 billion, and earnings 5.6 billion. EPS of 313, gross margins of 69%, net margin of 27%, and negative 660% debt to equity ratio. Their dividend yield is 8.3%, their payout ratio is over 100%, it's 120%. They pay out more in dividends than they profit. The X dividend date is 614. X means without dividend. So if you buy the stock on or after 614, you will not get this dividend. If you buy the stock on or before June 13th, you will get the dividend. And the dividend I'm referring to is the one that's going to be paid on July 10th. Here's the PE ratio relative to their peers. Philip Morris 17, Altria 15, Japan Tobacco 12, Imperial 9, and BAT 9. 
Altria has the highest earnings growth, 12%. Here's their P.E. ratio the last five years. It was 100 at the end of 2020. Their current P.E. is 14. A fair P.E. is 27. The fair ratio is based on a statistical model created by Simply Wall Street to approximate an expected ratio for a company based on its growth, risk, and industry factors. So that's good. Usually the lower the better for P.E. ratio. Simply Wall Street's valuation is $72. They say the stock is 37% undervalued. 17 analysts price this stock and the average price target is 49. They say the stock is 9% undervalued. This blue line is their revenue in the past and projected revenue. It's projected to be $21.5 billion in 2025 and earnings of $9.5 billion. So it doesn't look like that much growth over the next 2-3 years. Analysts are forecasting their earnings to be 12% which is better than the industry average of 8%, but lower than the market of 15%. The revenue forecast is 2% for this company, which is lower than the industry, the tobacco industry, and a lot lower than the market. This blue line on the top is their revenue since 2012. The green line is their earnings since 2012. They had negative earnings in 2020, and their revenue is highest in the third quarter of 2021. Revenue of $23 billion. In the past year, their earnings are up 86%, the industry only 3%, the market 5%. But in the past five years, their earnings are negative 20%, the industry is up and the market's up. Their ROA is 18%, the industry is 9.5%. ROA is net income over assets, it's how well you use your assets to generate a profit. Their return on capital employed, 45% last year, 27% three years ago. Their interest coverage ratio is 11.7. That means they could cover their interest payment 12 times. The calculation is operating income over interest expense. Cash of 3.9 billion, negative 3.8 billion of equity. Their short-term and long-term liabilities are higher than their assets. Here's their debt since 2012. And the blue line is their equity since 2012. In 2018, their equity was higher than their debt, but now their debt is much higher than their equity. Let's look at their dividend section. Yield of 8.3%, payout ratio of 120%. The industry average is 6%. The next dividend payment is July 9th, and the dividend per share is 376, which is more than our EPS of 313. Their dividend yield is a lot higher than the past, and it's projected to increase to over 9% by 2025. Billy Gifford, the CFO, makes $16 million. He's been with the company 3.2 years. His actual salary is $1.3 million. His total compensation package is $16 million. Here's the rest of the leadership team. The CFO makes $5 million. COO, $5.5 million. General Counsel, $6.6 million. Chief Strategy and Growth Officer, $3.8 million. And Senior VP, $3.8 million. 59% of the company is held by institutions, 41% by the general public. Their biggest shareholder is Vanguard at over 9%, then Capital Research, BlackRock, State Street, Charles Schwab, Geode, Fidelity, BNY Mellon, Northern Trust, and a bunch of other companies. Their employee count seems to be going down. They had 9,100 in 2012, 8,300 in 2018. Now they have 6,300. It was lower, 6,000 in 2021. And this is where the stock trades on the New York Stock Exchange, ticker MO, London Stock Exchange, Mexican Bolsa, Swiss, Deutsche Börse, Zitra, Santiago, Vienna, Euro TLX, Bulgaria, Santiago, BATS Europe, Buenos Aires, and Sao Paulo Stock Exchange. Let's go back to the model. This is their capital structure. Negative 3.9 billion of equity, 25 billion of debt. So they're 100% debt since they have negative equity. Their net debt is 21.5 billion. So they have about $4 billion of cash on their balance sheet. I gave them a whack of 8.5% and that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for, that's $143 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $129 billion. We divide that by 1.8 billion shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $73. They're trading at $46, so they're trading at a 37% discount. It's a strong buy according to the model. We saw earlier Simply Wall Street is at $72. They say the stock is 37% undervalued. 
Seven analysts priced this stock and the average price target is 49, the low is 37, the high is 56. Another 17 analysts priced this stock and the average price target is 49, they say the stock is 9% undervalued. They pay a quarterly dividend and they raise it each year, it was 70 cents in 2018, 94 cents currently, that's a yield of 8 and 1 quarter percent which is 84% of their free cash flow, 120% of their net income. This is where the stock has been trading since 95. It got to its highest point at the end of 2006. It was about $90 a share. Look how this stock crashed during the Great Recession. It looks like it was down to about $5. But they still paid their dividend even when the stock price went down. Over the next nine years, it kept going up close to $80. It did fall to below 40 when COVID hit, but now it's trading in the mid 40s. In the past five years, this stock is down 21%, while British Tobacco is down 33%, but Philip Morris is up 13%. That's performing the best out of these three stocks. There are 13 companies in the same industry as Altria, and if they have a number in red, they're worse than the median. If they have a number in blue, they're better. They spend 215 million in CapEx, more than the average, a lot lower than Philip Morris. Also a lot lower than BAT. We can't look at that debt to equity ratio since they have negative equity. They pay a high dividend, higher than the median average. They generate lots of free cash flow, a little more than Philip Morris. They rank second in market cap. Philip Morris is first by far. We can't look at their price to book since they have negative equity. Their PE is right around the average. Their price to free cash flow is the median. And their price to sales is worse than the average of median. They generate lots of revenue but a lot less than Philip Morris and a bit less than BAT. And their five-year annual revenue growth rate is negative. The average is 12%. Philip Morris is flat. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 37% discount. They still generate lots of free cash flow and they do pay a really nice dividend, but it seems like there's some downward pressure on this stock lately. But for a long-term hold, I think it should be fine. I rank their free cash flows and revenue 6 out of 10, their ratio is 5 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give the video a like, subscribe, or comment below. If you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.